has it been since you camped out? Come on. The casting process for the 1974 TV series, The Six Million Dollar Man, was a careful selection of talents to bring the story of Steve Austin to life. Lee Majors was an obvious choice for the lead role, as the producers wanted someone who could convincingly portray a strong, athletic character. Majors, already known for his roles in the Big Valley and the men from Shiloh, had the right look and acting chops. The role of Oscar Goldman, Steve Austin's boss at the Office of Scientific Intelligence, went to Richard Anderson. Anderson's prior experience in both film and television, including appearances in Dan August and The Fugitive, made him a suitable fit for the authoritative character. Lindsay Wagner, who played Jamie Somers, Steve Austin's love interest and eventual bionic woman, was initially cast as a guest star in the episode The Bionic Woman. Her chemistry with Lee Majors led to her own spin-off series. Wagner's background in modeling and her natural screen presence contributed to her successful casting. The casting directors held auditions for the roles of Dr. Rudy Wells and Peggy Callahan, eventually casting Martin Balsam and Jennifer Darling, respectively. Balsam's extensive film and television career, including his role in A Thousand Clowns, made him a strong choice for the caring, yet sometimes stern, bionics expert. Darling, with her experience in television, brought the right amount of spunk and charm to the role of the OC's communications expert. Chemistry tests played a significant role in finalizing the cast, as the producers wanted to ensure that the actors would work well together on screen. These tests, combined with the actors' prior experience and talent, led to the successful casting of The Six Million Dollar Man. I guess the actual flight's a go. The Six Million Dollar Man, a 1974 TV series, was brought to life by director Richard Irving. Irving's approach was to create a compelling blend of science fiction and action, focusing on the human drama of a man rebuilt with bionic limbs. He was influenced by the growing interest in cybernetics and the potential of human enhancement through technology. Irving's directorial style was characterized by his attention to detail and his commitment to creating a believable world. He worked closely with the cast and crew, fostering a collaborative environment that allowed for creative input from all involved. He encouraged the actors to explore their characters' emotions and motivations, resulting in nuanced performances that added depth to the story. Irving's collaboration with the show's writers was also crucial. He worked closely with them to ensure that the scripts aligned with his vision for the series. He was known for his ability to translate complex ideas into visual storytelling, making the science fiction elements of the show accessible to a broad audience. The visual style of The Six Million Dollar Man was heavily influenced by Irving's background in film noir. He used low-key lighting and dramatic camera angles to create a sense of tension and drama. The show's iconic opening sequence, with its slow motion shots of Steve Austin running, was a testament to Irving's commitment to visual storytelling. In terms of set design, Irving favored a realistic approach. The show's laboratories and offices were designed to look like real-world spaces, enhancing the sense of believability. The bionic effects were also groundbreaking for their time, with Irving insisting on practical effects that were integrated seamlessly into the live-action footage. In summary, Richard Irving's directorial vision for The Six Million Dollar Man was characterized by his commitment to creating a believable world, his attention to detail, and his innovative use of visual storytelling. His collaborative approach and influence from film noir contributed to the show's unique style and enduring popularity. I don't care if she had some guy work you over. I told you to find her and bring her here. The Six Million Dollar Man, a 1974 TV series, features Colonel Steve Austin, an astronaut given bionic implants after a crash. Here are some little known facts. The bionic sound effect was created by slamming a metal garbage can lid, and Lee Majors was not the first choice for the role. Did you know that the show's pilot episode was actually the highest rated TV movie of the entire 1973 season? Or that the famous line, we can rebuild him. We have the technology was inspired by the slogan of a Japanese electronics company. Lee Majors, who played Steve Austin, has shared that his favorite episode was the $7 million man, where Austin gains a new bionic guy. Do you have a favorite episode or memory associated with this show? We'd love to hear your stories and personal experiences related to the $6 million man in the comments below. 
There are many funny, shocking, and even sad facts coming up. So keep watching this video. So reassure him unconsciously anyway. We wouldn't have to do this if he were... The Six Million Dollar Man, a 1974 TV series, was produced with careful attention to set design and location. The show's main character, Steve Austin, was a former astronaut with bionic implants, which led to various action-packed scenes. The production team constructed detailed sets to depict Steve Austin's home, office, and labs. These sets were designed to reflect the high-tech world of bionics and to accommodate the filming of special effects, such as slow motion and matte shots. Locations for filming included Southern California's aerospace facilities, universities, and hospitals, which lent authenticity to the series. The production also utilized Big Bear Mountain and other natural landscapes for outdoor scenes. One logistical challenge was integrating the bionic effects into live-action footage. To achieve this, the production team employed innovative techniques such as chroma key compositing, also known as green screen, to superimpose Austin's animated bionic limbs onto the live action scenes. The team also used specialized cameras capable of filming in slow motion, allowing for the iconic bionic sound effect to be added in post-production, synchronized with the movement of Austin's enhanced limbs. Despite these technical advancements, the production faced budget constraints. To save on costs, the team often repurposed sets, props, and costumes from episode to episode. In summary, the production of The Six Million Dollar Man combined intricate set design, strategic location choices, and innovative techniques to create a compelling series that captured the imagination of audiences worldwide. Let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Chester Dolans. The Six Million Dollar Man, a popular 1970s sci-fi series, tells the story of Steve Austin, an astronaut who undergoes government-funded surgery after a severe accident. With six million dollars, surgeons replace his lost arm, legs, and eye with bionic parts, giving him enhanced speed, strength, and vision. After his transformation, Austin becomes a problem solver for the government, facing various foes such as aliens, robots, spies, and even an aggressive primate. The show was highly influential, popularizing the concept of cyborgs before the Terminator series. Its success led to the spin-off The Bionic Woman. The series, while dated by its 70s special effects and fashion, remains a great watch for its engaging stories and themes. It offers a chance for older viewers to reminisce about their past and a family-friendly viewing option. Despite its popularity, the complete series is not available on DVD in the USA, unlike in other countries. Fans in the country of origin eagerly await its release, allowing them to enjoy this piece of television history. The Six Million Dollar Man is a memorable show from the 70s, offering a unique blend of sci-fi, action, and adventure. Passion is uh, hard labor. Huh? Why put it off? Look, he just changed the tire and get his car back to the mine. The Six Million Dollar Man, a 1974 TV series, featured a musically innovative soundtrack that significantly contributed to its emotional tone and narrative. The series' main theme, composed by Oliver Nelson, is an iconic piece that sets the stage for the show's blend of drama, action, and science fiction. The score, largely created by Nelson and his team, consisted of dynamic and energetic compositions. They used a mix of orchestral and electronic instruments to emphasize the futuristic concept of a cyborg agent. The music often mirrored the character's bionic abilities with fast-paced, rhythmic cues during action sequences. Composer and musician Dana Kaproff, who worked on the series, once mentioned that the music aimed to highlight the blend of humanity and technology within the main character. The score often conveyed the emotional struggles Steve Austin faced while dealing with his new identity as a bionic man. In addition to the score, the Six Million Dollar Man also featured popular songs from the 1970s in its soundtrack. These songs punctuated dramatic moments and added a layer of cultural context to the series. The music of The Six Million Dollar Man was a groundbreaking element of its production. It not only complemented the narrative, but also provided a unique auditory experience that has left a lasting impact on television music. Well, it looked like explosives were rigged to the cable. It'll go off the second we reach the top. Told you these guys play Lindsay Wagner, known for her role in The Six Million Dollar Man, made a notable appearance as the primary guest star in the first episode of The Rockford Files. Martha Scott, on the other hand, formed a partnership with Robert Ryan, 
and Henry Fonda in 1968, co-founding the Plumstead Playhouse in New York, which was later renamed the Plumstead Theatre Society. Together, they co-produced the Broadway production of First Monday in October, and its movie version with Fonda and Jane Alexander, as well as an L, a production of Twelve Angry Men in 1985. William Sylvester, an American actor who moved to England after World War II, studied at RADA in 1947 and became the first American member of the Old Vic. He appeared in several British pictures in the 1950s and 1960s, becoming a fixture on radio and TV before returning to the United States. These individuals have made significant contributions to the acting world, each leaving their own unique mark on the industry. Was this okay, now. One of the most iconic scenes in The Six Million Dollar Man is from the episode The Moon and the Desert. In this scene, Steve Austin, played by Lee Majors, uses his bionic powers to run at superhuman speed across a dry lake bed. The scene is shot from a low angle, emphasizing Austin's speed and power as he blurs past the camera, leaving a trail of dust in his wake. Director Richard Irving used a high-speed camera to capture the action, creating a slow-motion effect that makes Austin's bionic speed even more impressive. Major's performance is key to selling the scene, as he strikes a heroic pose with his arms outstretched and his eyes focused on the horizon. Cinematographer Fred J. Conecamp used a wide-angle lens to capture the vastness of the desert landscape, making Austin's bionic speed seem even more superhuman. The use of natural lighting and muted colors adds to the realism of the scene, making it feel more grounded in reality despite Austin's fantastical abilities. This scene had a significant impact on audiences as it showcased the potential of bionic technology and established Steve Austin as a cultural icon. Majors himself has commented on the scene's impact, saying that running scene became the symbol of the show. It was a signature moment that defined the Six Million Dollar Man. Another iconic scene from the Six Million Dollar Man is the bionic eye zoom in from the episode Population Zero. In this scene, Austin uses his bionic eye to scan the horizon and zoom in on a distant object. The effect is achieved through a combination of practical effects and animation, with a close-up shot of Austin's eye accompanied by a distinctive sound effect. Director Alan Crossland Jr. used a variety of camera angles and editing techniques to create a sense of tension and excitement in the scene. The use of close-ups and point-of-view shots puts the audience in Austin's shoes, making them feel like they are experiencing his bionic abilities firsthand. Cinematographer Archard Dalzell used a variety of lighting and color effects to create a moody, atmospheric setting for the scene. The use of shadows and muted colors adds to the sense of mystery and intrigue, making the scene feel more suspenseful. This scene had a significant impact on audiences as it showcased the potential of bionic technology and established Steve Austin as a cultural icon. The distinctive sound effect associated with Austin's bionic I became synonymous with the character, and the scene remains one of the most memorable moments from the series. Steve, I know you've been trying to find me. I know and, and yet have stayed here. Martha Scott, known for her role as Charlton Heston's wife and Ben-Hur, had a history of stepping in when needed. When the original actress in the Tumblr was let go, Heston recommended Scott, praising her acting skills and professionalism. Ford Rainey, who also appeared in The Six Million Dollar Man, led an interesting life outside of acting. He tended to beehives at his Malibu ranch, utilized a solar heater, and earned the nickname The Wizard from Neighborhood Children. In his later years, he bred birds and won trophies in Southern California competitions. The characters of Oscar Goldman and Rudy Wells, portrayed by Richard Anderson and Martin Balsam respectively, appeared on The Six Million Dollar Man and its spin-off, The Bionic Woman. When The Bionic Woman moved to another network, these characters continued to appear, marking the first time the same recurring characters appeared on two different television series on two separate networks simultaneously. They've been here for 250 years. They can move forward through time at the blink of an eye. The Six Million Dollar Man, a 1974 TV series, left a significant cultural and social impact. It resonated with audiences due to its unique blend of science fiction and action, which was not common at the time. The show's protagonist, Steve Austin, a former astronaut given bionic limbs after a severe accident, was a compelling character. He embodied the idea of human potential 
and the merging of technology with the human body, which sparked discussion and fascination. The series influenced pop culture in various ways. The sound effect used for Steve Austin's bionic limbs, a high-pitched electronic noise, became widely recognized and was often parodied in other media. The show also popularized the term bionic, leading to a surge in the use of the word in everyday language and inspiring other forms of media, such as the spin-off series, The Bionic Woman. The Six Million Dollar Man contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. It explored the concept of human enhancement and the ethical implications of such advancements, which remains a pertinent topic today. The series also showcased a character with disabilities in a leading role, challenging stereotypes and promoting inclusivity. In essence, The Six Million Dollar Man not only entertained audiences, but also sparked conversation and influenced pop culture, leaving a lasting impact on the cultural and social landscape. It's, you better go home. Thanks anyway. The children's show The Electric Company on PBS created a series of skits called The Six Dollar and 39 Cent Man, parodying the popular series The Six Million Dollar Man. The success of The Six Million Dollar Man and its spin-off, The Bionic Woman, marked a significant turning point for television network entertainment. This success demonstrated that superhero fantasies could be taken seriously as drama, rather than just campy parody comedy, paving the way for other superhero series and the Salkind family's Superman film project. In other news, John Delancey, who played villain roles in The Six Million Dollar Man, co-hosts Star Trek The Music with Robert Picaro. Their concert presentation with narration showcases the music from the Star Trek franchise. Delancey's contributions to television and music continue to be appreciated by audiences today. Dollars has a lovely sound to it. Okay, Fifty thousand dollars just for pocket money. The Six Million Dollar Man, a 1974 TV series, received positive critical reception and had strong audience reactions. The show was praised for its unique concept, compelling storyline, and the lead actor's performance. The series was based on the novel Cyborg and followed the story of a former astronaut, Steve Austin, who was rebuilt with bionic implants after a severe accident. Lee Goldberg, a television critic, described the show as a perfect blend of science fiction, action, and drama that captured the imagination of audiences. The show's innovative special effects, including slow motion and sound effects to illustrate Austin's bionic speed and strength, were also widely appreciated. The series was a rating success and ran for five seasons with a total of 100 episodes. It received several award nominations, including three Emmy nominations for Outstanding Film Sound Editing as, and one nomination for Outstanding Achievement in Film Editing for Entertainment Programming for a series. The show's success and accolades were significant for those involved, including the lead actor, Lee Majors, who became a household name and a sex symbol of the 1970s. The series also helped to establish the career of the show's producer, Harv Bennett, who later produced the Star Trek film franchise. The positive reception and accolades for The Six Million Dollar Man are a testament to the show's enduring appeal and its impact on popular culture. The series remains a classic example of 1970s television and continues to be celebrated for its groundbreaking concept, compelling storytelling, and iconic lead character featured uh, Jennifer Darlene as uh, Callahan, which was uh, one of the more popular. The Captain and Tennell Variety show once featured a skit called the Bionic Watermelon, where a watermelon, after falling off a truck and getting rebuilt, gained the ability to fight crime. This unique take on the Bionic theme is a testament to the show's creativity. In the Bionic Boy episodes of The Six Million Dollar Man, actress Joan Van Ark played a character named Val. Interestingly, she also played a character with the same name in the series Knott's Landing. Oscar Goldman, a key character in The Six Million Dollar Man, often expressed shock or surprise by quickly removing his glasses and staring in disbelief. This distinctive reaction added a touch of humor and relatability to his character. During the filming of The Six Million Dollar Man, the show's star, Lee Majors, was known for his pranks on set. He once replaced a crew member's chair with a toilet seat, causing quite a surprise when the person sat down. The show's distinctive sound effect, which mimicked the bionic limbs movement, was created by a simple but ingenious method. 
The sound designers used the tearing of a piece of masking tape and slowed it down to achieve the desired effect. Richard Anderson, who played Oscar Goldman, had a fascinating background before joining the series. He served as a naval officer during World War II and even appeared in the classic film Forbidden Planet. Lindsay Wagner, who played Jamie Somers, was initially hesitant about joining the show. However, she changed her mind after meeting with the producers and realizing the potential for exploring complex themes and character development. The show's iconic opening sequence, featuring Lee Majors running and jumping in slow motion, was filmed at the famous Vasquez Rocks Natural Area Park in California. This location has been used in numerous films and TV shows, including Star Trek and Planet of the Apes. During the filming of action scenes, Lee Majors often performed his own stunts, despite the risks involved. This dedication to authenticity contributed to the show's success and helped create its unique appeal. The series was based on the 1972 TV movie Cyborg, which introduced the character of Steve Austin. The movie's success led to the development of the $6 million man, which further solidified the bionic hero's place in pop culture history. These anecdotes offer a glimpse into the lighthearted and dedicated atmosphere behind the scenes of the Six Million Dollar Man, showcasing the cast and crew's camaraderie and commitment to creating an enduring television classic. I think we got the waterfall. And I count on getting Come some on. pictures of it for my dad's fire and rescue newsletter. Lee Majors, known for his role in the Six Million Dollar Man, first worked with Lindsay Wagner when she guest starred on his show Owen Marshall, Counselor at Law. They later reunited on The Six Million Dollar Man, where Wagner originated her famous role as the bionic woman. Their professional relationship continued for the following two decades, and they still make appearances together at bionic conventions. Farrah Fawcett, who also guest starred on The Six Million Dollar Man, had a significant relationship with actor Ryan O'Neill. Although they separated in 1997, they reconciled in 2001 after O'Neill was diagnosed with leukemia. They remained a couple until Fawcett's death. Martha Scott, who was a member of the Academy and a previous nominee, was not included in the memorial tribute at the 76th Annual Academy Awards in 24. This omission is unusual, considering her contributions to the film industry. What I understand is that we're wasting precious time. I don't intend to waste much. The Six Million Dollar Man, a 1974 TV series, holds a significant place in film history. It was one of the first shows to popularize the concept of a cyborg, significantly influencing science fiction and action genres. The series' success led to a wave of similar productions, shaping the future of filmmaking. The show's protagonist, Steve Austin, became an iconic figure, embodying a blend of human drama and science fiction. His character's enhanced physical abilities, thanks to bionic implants, sparked the imagination of audiences worldwide. This concept was novel and exciting, paving the way for a new kind of hero in both television and film. The Six Million Dollar Man also had a substantial impact on special effects. The series often showcased Austin's bionic speed and strength through slow motion and sound effect techniques. These methods, while not new, were refined and popularized by the show, setting a precedent for future productions. Moreover, the series inspired numerous subsequent works. It led to a spin-off series, The Bionic Woman, and several TV movies. The concept of bionic humans has been revisited in various forms of media, including films like Robocop and Terminator, and TV shows like Dark Angel and Almost Human. The influence of the Six Million Dollar Man can also be seen in the modern superhero genre, where characters often have extraordinary abilities due to technological enhancements or mutations. In summary, The Six Million Dollar Man left an indelible mark on film history. Its innovative concept, iconic protagonist, and influential special effects laid the groundwork for many future productions. The series' enduring popularity and influence are a testament to its significance in the world of film and television. I doubt if it... Martha Scott, an accomplished actress, had a significant impact in the film industry with six of her films nominated for the Oscars Best Picture category. Only one of them, Ben-Hur, won the award. Stephanie Powers, on the other hand, gained wealth and property in Beverly Hills, Malibu, and Hong Kong, thanks to her successful TV series, Heart to Heart, and Robert Wagner's insistence on having her as his partner. 
Lastly, John DeLancey made a notable contribution to the Star Trek franchise as the first actor to use the word Trek in Star Trek The Next Generation, and James Cromwell as the only actor to utter the word Star Trek in the franchise. Okay. Johnson has him under surveillance. You can reach In the first two seasons of The Six Million Dollar Man, Alan Oppenheimer played Dr. Rudy Wells. However, he was replaced by Martin E. Brooks from the third season onwards. Oppenheimer returned for a single episode in the third season, which featured flashbacks to a previous episode. Initially, Monty Markham was the producer's first choice for the role of Steve Austin, but Lee Majors was eventually cast. Markham later appeared in the show as Barney Miller in season two's fifth episode, titled The Seven Million Dollar Man. Farrah Fawcett, who starred in the show's third season, died on the same day as Michael Jackson, although at different times. She passed away at 9.28 a.m. PDT, while Jackson was pronounced dead at 2.26 p.m. after hours of unsuccessful resuscitation. How was I? The opening sequence of The Six Million Dollar Man has been honored in two television commercials, one by Coors Light in the mid-1990s, and another by the 2012 Mazda CX-5 crossover utility vehicle. This popular 70s show featured Major's wife, Farrah Fawcett, in three different roles. Initially, Major's advocated for Fawcett to play Jamie Summers, but she was ultimately cast in other parts. Years later, Lindsay Wagner, who portrayed the bionic woman, agreed to reprise her role in Bionic Ever After, on the condition that her character marries the six million dollar man. After two decades of fan anticipation, the movie ends with a wedding. Hey! Hey you! In the first two seasons of The Six Million Dollar Man, Steve Austin often explained his bionic eyes abilities by claiming to eat many carrots. However, the show's popularity had an unexpected consequence. Some children, fans of the series, tried to injure themselves to receive bionic parts. In response, the producers and Lee Majors wrote a letter to at least one such child, emphasizing the show's fictional nature. In a professional context, it's interesting to note that two key figures in the production of The Six Million Dollar Man shared a background. Alan Oppenheimer and Lou Scheimer, both from the Carnegie Tech class of 1952, didn't meet during their time at school as Scheimer was in art and Oppenheimer in drama. They only discovered their shared alma mater years later, while working together at Filmation when Oppenheimer noticed Scheimer's Carnegie Tech ring. I'll eliminate him. So relax. Enjoy yourself. Stay put. And don't worry. I'll take care of Taylor. Jane Marrow, known for her role on the Danger Man series, shares a unique distinction as one of the few actresses to have shared an on-screen kiss with Patrick McGuvin's character. Contrary to the opening sequence of The Six Million Dollar Man, Steve's accident did not involve a lunar mission, but a routine demonstration for the ground crew. The dramatic dialogue in the opening, including phrases like we can rebuild him, was added later and did not occur in any episode. William Sylvester, initially considered for the lead role in The Buccaneers in 1956, ultimately lost the part to Robert Shaw. Despite this, he went on to have a successful career in the industry. In the production of The Six Million Dollar Man, the creators took creative liberties with the opening sequence and dialogue, adding dramatic flair to the show's introduction. The pilot episode did not feature Oscar Goldman, a key character in the series. Sylvester's early career included a near miss for a lead role, but he still made a name for himself in the industry. When you want to come out, we'll fly in a helicopter. Stephanie Powers, known for her role in The Six Million Dollar Man, had an interesting encounter with Blake Edwards at Columbia Studios. They met while discussing their sunglasses, with Powers mentioning hers were from a friend in Monte Carlo, and Edwards saying he brought his back from there. Farrah Fawcett, another actress in the series, had a peculiar experience during her opening night of Butterflies Are Free at the Burt Reynolds Dinner Theater in Florida. An obese woman in the front row shouted insults, made bird calls, flashed the performers, and caused other patrons to vomit and faint. Despite this, reviews for Fawcett's performance were positive. Notably, some scenes in The Six Million Dollar Man are reused and recycled from previous episodes, which may have gone unnoticed by some viewers. Overall, the production of the series involved various unique and unusual occurrences, contributing to its distinctiveness. Fire leader. 
Where is he? Uh, we can't see him, but he sure as heck got a beat on it. Lee Majors gained fame for his leading roles in The Six Million Dollar Man and The Fall Guy. Interestingly, Lloyd Bochner, who appeared in The Six Million Dollar Man, has a son, Hart Bochner, who acted in Die Hard, based on a novel penned by Roderick Thorpe, who also wrote The Detective, where Bochner played a significant role. Before his time on The Six Million Dollar Man, Lee Majors endured three separate whippings on the Big Valley. That's my fault. Hello, Victor. Dimitri? If you harm her in any During the production of The Six Million Dollar Man, tensions arose in 1977 when lead actor Lee Majors refused to work until his contract demands were met. Producers even contemplated replacing him with other actors, including Gil Gerard, Bruce Jenner, and Harrison Ford. Henry Jones, a significant figure in the series, had a distinguished career in theater before moving to film and television. He made his Broadway debut in 1931 and became more active in the late 1930s, appearing in numerous hit productions such as My Sister Eileen, The Solid Gold Cadillac, The Bad Seed, Sunrise at Campobolo, and Advise and Consent until 1961. Steve, the show's main character, had a catchphrase in almost every episode, saying either you bet or you got it. These phrases became synonymous with his character and added to the show's appeal. All right, which reminds me, what happened to you? Well, you can't get near those Russians that you don't pull a disappearing act. John DeLancey, known for his role as Q in Star Trek, made an early appearance in The Six Million Dollar Man in 1978, alongside William Shatner, who played Captain James T. Kirk in the original Star Trek series. Martha Scott, who acted in The Six Million Dollar Man, shares a unique connection with Charlton Heston having played his mother twice in Ben-Hur, and the Ten Commandments, and his wife twice on stage. The opening sequence of the Six Million Dollar Man features a crashing aircraft, which is an M2F2, a type of lifting body configuration built by Northrop. The sound effects of the crash are from a real-life accident that took place on May 10, 1967, at Edwards Air Force Base in California. The test pilot, Bruce Peterson, hit the ground at a speed of 250 miles per hour, tumbling six times. Unfortunately, Peterson lost use of his right eye due to an infection and had to end his flying career. It's worth noting that Peterson disliked reliving his accident through the show. No, and his name is Walter. Well, what does that make you? Look, you said they may have went to her trailer. John DeLancey is widely recognized for his portrayal of the character Q in the Star Trek franchise. In the 1974 series, The Six Million Dollar Man, a specific phone number, 555 2368 is consistently shown in close-ups of telephones, and it also appears in the Bionic Woman series. Monty Markham played the role of the Seven Million Dollar Man alongside Lee Majors, and his character's name was changed from Barney Miller to Barney Hiller due to the popularity of the television police comedy with the same name. Only countdown. And it wouldn't really be notable had it not been uh, for Martin Kate. Richard Anderson, known for his role as Oscar Goldman in the Bionic franchise, wore a hairpiece for the part, as his real hair had thinned over the years. This can be seen in the case of the Paper Bullets in 1964 and Runner in the Dark in 1965, where he appears without the toupee. Sandra Bullock gained fame for her role as Kate Mason, also known as the Bionic Girl, in the same franchise. She was a protege to Steve Austin and Jamie Somers. Lee Majors, who played Steve Austin, had been offered the role of Joe Buck in Midnight Cowboy in 1969, but turned it down due to his contractual obligations with the Big Valley, which was renewed for another year. The role was later made famous by John Voight. Stephanie Powers and Lee Majors, the stars of the popular 1974 series, The Six Million Dollar Man, didn't hit it off right away. The pair first met at a New Year's Eve party and again while browsing books, but it wasn't until their third encounter at a tennis tournament that things clicked. During the show's run, Majors tried to change Austin's appearance by growing a mustache, but it didn't go over well with audiences. In reality, Majors had undergone a rhinoplasty and changed his hairstyle to conceal the procedure. Richard Anderson, who played a government official on the show, worked for a fictional agency called The O.C. In a strange coincidence, Anderson had also made an orientation video for a real government department, also called The O.C., but with very different responsibilities. He does have a violent temper. 
Well, look, then I'll leave. I have to get to the wreckage of... Virginia Gregg, known for voicing the mother in the Psycho series, also played another character named Mistress Bates in a different production. Martha Scott, who acted as John Carradine's mother in The Ten Commandments, was actually younger than him in real life. Farrah Fawcett's character was portrayed by Trisha Helfer in the unauthorized Charlie's Angels movie. These actresses have made their mark in the industry through their unique roles and contributions. Your manager, but you didn't tell me. Hey, that's it. In the pilot episode of The Six Million Dollar Man, we learn that the project to rebuild Steve Austin cost six million dollars, providing the series with its title. Interestingly, the voice behind Steve Austin, a man barely alive in the opening credits, is none other than producer Harv Bennett, who stepped in when Richard Anderson was unavailable to record the edition. John DeLancey, known for his role in The Six Million Dollar Man, shares a close friendship with Richard Dean Anderson, star of MacGyver and Stargate SG-1. The trio has appeared together in episodes of both shows, as well as Legend, showcasing their strong bond and collaborative spirit. The Six Million Dollar Man's production team featured notable individuals like Harv Bennett, who not only produced the series, but also contributed to the iconic opening voiceover. His involvement in the show further highlights the talented team behind its success. You okay? Stephanie Powers, known for her role in The Six Million Dollar Man, shared a ballet class with Natalie Wood and Jill St. John in her youth. Interestingly, all three women had relationships with Robert Wagner, with Wood as Wagner's first and third wife, St. John as his fourth wife, and Powers as a longtime co-star and friend. Lindsay Wagner, who played the lead role in the series, stumbled upon her acting career accidentally. She was a regular babysitter for the Dukes of Hazard star James Best Children when he recommended that she attend his acting classes, which marked the beginning of her successful acting career. In The Six Million Dollar Man, Steve's boss, Oscar, rarely disagrees with Steve's proposed plans or strategies. Although he may initially resist, he is quickly persuaded, possibly due to their close friendship. This dynamic showcases the strong bond between the two characters throughout the series. Been reading my thoughts. No, I never do it with my friends. Can you imagine all the fight? Alan Oppenheimer, known for his role in The Six Million Dollar Man, received the Drama Log Award for Outstanding Performance in 1990. The mystery behind the show's distinctive bionic sound effects remains, with various theories circulating. Some attribute it to a metal ruler flip or rebar scrape, while others suggest it was a slowed down Bigfoot effect, a pipe organ with reverb, or the work of an uncredited Jim Troutman. John DeLancey, who also appeared in the series, is one of seven actors to play the same character on three different Star Trek series, portraying Q in The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. I've had women just start to cry when they're talking to me because they want to express how... John DeLancey, also an actor, shares a name with the character he played in Mr. Monk's Days in Bed. A few years before Lindsay Wagner became famous as the Bionic Woman, she first worked with Lee Majors and Owen Marshall, counselor at law. Wagner's breakthrough role as the Bionic Woman was introduced in The Six Million Dollar Man where Major starred as the lead. William Sylvester, known for his acting career, appeared in three movies with Devil in the title Devil Doll, Devils of Darkness, and The Devil Inside. His work in these films showcases his range and versatility as an actor. Yeah, we found the Jeep, but we can't find the two men. Something else, sir. The convoy is over three minutes late. Well, that doesn't make sense. In the 1974 TV series, The Six Million Dollar Man, Martha Scott, despite playing Charlton Heston's mother in previous films, was only 11 years his senior in real life. John DeLancey, who acted in the show, has an impressive acting resume, including appearances in both the Doctor Who and Star Trek franchises, as well as in Emergency and The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. He also co-hosts Star Trek The Music with Robert Picaro. Initially, Monty Markham was Martin Caden's first choice for the role of Steve Austin, but ultimately, another actor was cast. You've got to help me. You've got to stop that computer. Martha Scott, known for her role as Olive Deering's mother in The Ten Commandments, was only six years older than Stephanie Powers in real life. Speaking of Powers, the failure of her TV series The Girl from UNCLE made it difficult for her to find work for two years. 
In the early episodes of The Six Million Dollar Man, Steve Austin, the main character, would occasionally kill villains. However, as it became apparent that Austin was becoming a role model for children, the level of violence in the series decreased. Austin rarely killed anyone in later episodes. This change was likely made to ensure that the show remained appropriate for its young audience. Missing. Yes, that's right. They would, I mean, they'd, everybody would know. They'd find me right away if I went missing. Virginia Gregg was a prolific radio actor, known for her versatility in portraying various female characters in shows such as Dragnet, Nightbeat, and The Lone Ranger. She was often compared to her male counterparts, William Conrad, Ben Wright, and Elliot Lewis. Alan Oppenheimer played Dr. Rudy Wells in The Six Million Dollar Man, making his first appearance in the second TV movie. However, after seven episodes, he left the show and was replaced by Martin E. Brooks. The two actors later appeared together in The Execution. Farrah Fawcett, along with her Charlie's Angels co-stars Jacqueline Smith and Kate Jackson, was offered a spot on the cover of Time magazine in 1976. Despite the producer's request for them to give up their lunch hour for the photo shoot, Kate Jackson refused, citing the need to protect their personal time. She locked herself in a trailer with her co-stars, and after 45 minutes, the producers conceded, allowing them to pose for the magazine during the last 15 minutes of their lunch hour. This experience became a cherished memory for the three friends. But they didn't find a thing. Maybe it totally disintegrated. Oh, uh, now they're going to test program in the case. The franchise of The Six Million Dollar Man includes two characters who become bionic, Andy Sheffield and Michael Austin. In 1976, Vince Van Patten portrayed Andy Sheffield, a paralyzed accident victim who regained use of his legs through bionics. Michael Austin, Steve's illegitimate son, appeared in the 1987 TV movie The Return of The Six Million Dollar Man and The Bionic Woman and received bionics, becoming more powerful than his father. The opening credits of the show feature a real-life plane crash caused by an unexpected interruption. Pilot Bruce Peterson had to swerve suddenly to avoid a collision with a rescue helicopter, resulting in the crash. In Spanish-speaking countries of Latin America, the series is known as El Hombre Nuclear, distinguishing it from its original English title. The Six Million Dollar Man a popular 1970s TV series received its share of parodies, including a spoof in Mad Magazine. When the show was broadcast in Israel, it was renamed The Man Who Is Worth Millions due to the sensitive association of the number six million with the Holocaust. Before her role in The Six Million Dollar Man, Jane Merrill was strongly considered to replace Diana Rigg in The Avengers, but the part ultimately went to Linda Thorson. Merrow's near miss with the Avengers is a footnote in her career, which also included a notable consideration for a significant role in another popular series of the time. I've been dated. Alhag would have been dead five weeks. He was shot, trying to escape. In the 1974 television series The Six Million Dollar Man, several individuals from the Star Trek franchise made contributions. William Shatner, George Teke, Gary Lockwood, and Roger Perry all of whom had roles in the original Star Trek, also appeared in this series. D.C. Fontana, a writer for both the original Star Trek and Star Trek The Next Generation, penned an episode titled Rescue of Athena One, where the protagonist, Steve, remarks that space is indeed the final frontier, echoing the opening narration of Star Trek. Art Bennett, who worked on The Six Million Dollar Man, later produced several Star Trek films, John DeLancey, an actor known for his role in Star Trek The Next Generation and Star Trek Deep Space Nine, appeared in ten different seasons of various Star Trek series, making him one of only six actors to achieve this feat. Lee Majors, the lead actor in The Six Million Dollar Man, was a notable high school athlete. The football field at Middlesbrough High School was named after him in 1986, and he was inducted into their Sports Hall of Fame in 1991. Must have been defective. John DeLancey, known for his role in Star Trek The Next Generation, had a significant impact on the science fiction and fantasy genre. In 1996, he formed Alien Voices with Leonard Nimoy and Nat Sigaloff, producing audio remakes of classic stories such as The Time Machine and The Lost World. The Six Million Dollar Man, a popular television series, drew its source material from Martin Caden's 1971 novel Cyborg. Caden, a former U.S. Air Force pilot, 
and NASA, public relations man, created a compelling story that resonated with audiences. Delancey's work with Alien Voices demonstrates his commitment to sharing classic science fiction and fantasy stories with new audiences. Meanwhile, The Six Million Dollar Man, based on Caden's novel, remains a testament to the enduring appeal of these genres. All right, let's take five minutes. In the early stages of her career, Farrah Fawcett made an appearance on The Dating Game in 1965. Later, she gained fame for her role in the popular 1970s TV series, The Six Million Dollar Man. Martha Scott, who also starred in the show, was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for her contributions to live theater in 1993. Lindsay Wagner, known for her role as the bionic woman, delivered a heartfelt acceptance speech for her Emmy Award in 1976, expressing gratitude towards her then-husband Michael Brandon and guest star Linda Weiser for their support. John DeLancey, known for his role in The Six Million Dollar Man, also made appearances in Star Trek The Next Generation, totaling eight and seven seasons. Stephanie Powers, another cast member, once fought on a Mexican bullring using the nickname La Pecasita, which translates to the freckled one. Lastly, Lindsay Wagner, who also starred in the series, has a scar above her upper lip. This scar is a result of a car accident she was involved in back in 1976. Under the radar. The heat sensors don't pick up sailplanes. If anybody saw her, she... The exterior shots of the OSI headquarters and the Six Million Dollar Man were filmed at the Russell Senate Office building in Washington. DC this location provides an impressive backdrop for the series. Lee Majors, the actor who portrayed Colonel Steve Austin, had an impressive accomplishment in his career. He starred concurrently on two television series, Owen Marshall, Counselor at Law, and The Six Million Dollar Man. This dual role showcased his versatility as an actor. Majors also performed 90% of his own stunts in The Six Million Dollar Man. This hands-on approach added authenticity to his portrayal of Colonel Steve Austin, a character with extraordinary physical abilities. Play what I tell you to do, if you want to see her again. Oh my God, Steve was right. Get her out of here. The character of Steve Austin in The Six Million Dollar Man was based on real-life astronauts David Scott, and Eugene Cernan, as envisioned by author Martin Caden. Contrary to popular belief, Fembots were not a creation of the Six Million Dollar Man or its spin-off, The Bionic Woman. The concept of Fembots was first introduced in the TV series The Magician and later popularized by the movie Westworld. However, the Bionic franchise made their Fembots more human-like and mobile. Lee Majors, who played Steve Austin, once emphasized that despite his character's enhanced abilities, Steve Austin was not invincible. His bionic enhancements could malfunction, and he still had human weaknesses. This portrayal of a flawed superhuman character made Steve Austin a relatable and compelling figure for audiences. Mr. Chairman, Austin seems to have dropped from sight. Yesterday he was in Aspen, Colorado. Martha Scott, known for her Broadway role as Emily Webb in Our Town, experienced a change in the film version script. Initially, Emily died in childbirth, but the ending was altered for the movie, causing controversy among critics. Lindsay Wagner's mother, Marilyn Ball, was a building contractor and production consultant on her daughter's TV movies. William Sylvester, after returning from England to America, became a primary lead in The Gemini Man and had a recurring part on Quincy, M.E. despite his successful career. The film version of Our Town remains controversial due to the alteration of Emily's fate. And if it were attacked by the enemy, it's still there, Vasily, controlled by the computer. The 1973 song Midnight Train to Georgia has an interesting backstory, as it was inspired by the personal lives of Lee Majors and Farrah Fawcett. In the world of television, Majors is best known for his role as Colonel Steve Austin in the series The Six Million Dollar Man. Austin is an agent who works for the Office of Scientific Investigation, an organization that investigates dangerous scientific inventions. Interestingly, this organization first appeared 21 years earlier in Ivan Tor's The Magnetic Monster, the first in a trilogy featuring the Amen. The characters Steve Austin and Jamie Somers, who appeared in The Six Million Dollar Man and its spin-off, The Bionic Woman, were ranked number 19 in TV Guide's list of the 25 greatest sci-fi legends. This recognition is a testament to the enduring popularity of the show and its characters. 
In conclusion, The Six Million Dollar Man is a significant entry in the annals of television history with its compelling characters and thought-provoking themes. Because they know all about Dr. Bacon and the rest of you. So if you're smart, you better take me to him. If The Six Million Dollar Man left a lasting impression on you, we'd love to hear your stories. This groundbreaking 1974 series not only captured our attention with its cutting-edge special effects, but also left a personal impact on many. Did Steve Austin's bionic adventures inspire you to explore science and technology? Or perhaps you found solace in the show's themes of resilience and overcoming adversity. Whatever your connection, we'd be thrilled to hear about it. Feel free to share your memories, experiences, and thoughts on how this iconic series influenced your perspective on cinema. Your engagement through likes, shares, and subscriptions helps us create more cinematic explorations for everyone to enjoy. Let's celebrate the enduring legacy of the Six Million Dollar Man together. Very little. I, I, uh, I met with a man, but...